translated to pronounce an opinion concerning right or wrong actions of another. It also means to condemn others, uh, to be of opinionated, like, like what we mean is uh, from my point of view or the way I see it or from my perspective, right? And, you're, and, and you're, you're claiming all these things, you're judging. It means to deem or regard somebody or regard their character as and whatever you throw on at the end, right? You're judging their character is to think, it's to think, you know, well, I think they're no good. Well, I think they're sneaky. I think, I think, they're, I think they're a liar, you know? And so, so, you know, this is all coming from the Greek lexicon. So this certainly seems to confirm that believers should not allow themselves to condemn anyone or pass a sentence on anybody. Now, Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 2.15. He said, he who is spiritual judges all things, meaning, or meaning that with the Holy Spirit, because he is a spiritual person, he has the ability to discern both physical things of this world and the spiritual things of God. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. What this means is that the spiritual person cannot be correctly examined or investigated by those who do not have the help of the Holy Spirit. So what are we saying here? If you're not a Christian, if you're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, well, you don't have, you don't, you don't know how to judge a Christian. You don't know, you know, because because you're just you're just pretty much guessing and assuming. But Jesus here, uh, he's he's telling. Look what Jesus says here. He says, "Look beneath the surface, so that you can judge correctly." This is found in John seven twenty four. He says, "Look beneath the surface, so you can judge correctly." So Jesus is telling us, "Do not judge." But then he's saying, look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. And then we see Paul saying, he who is spiritual judges all things. So, so we see that we're talking about two separate um, words. Now the Greek word uh, and that we're talking about here is anakrino, which means to examine or judge. So see, as children of God, we are to examine and judge those who are ministering, who are talking, right? So, so we are to examine and judge to investigate, to inquire into uh, uh, the situation, you know, to sift through it. And it also means to question the situation, specifically in a forensic sense of a judge to hold an investigation. So, so we see here that we are, we are to be discerning. So we are to preach the whole gospel, the whole counsel of God, including the Bible's teaching on sin, Opposing sin is not wrong, and but we are to approach them gently and in a loving way. Are you guys with me? You guys follow me? So how do we reconcile these seemingly different implications here? Right? There's two different ways that, that Jesus is talking about judging. Well, here we're going to sum it up in a nutshell. A Christian must judge the sinfulness of an act, but a Christian must not judge a person in the sense of condemning him or sentencing him. See, and this is what, what Jesus is talking about when he's telling us not to judge others and you will not be judged, right? He says, don't judge others and you will not be judged. You know, he's telling us to investigate the situation, think about it, form an opinion about the deed, but leave the judging of the doer up to God, right? We leave that situation up to God. So we see that the, the person who believes all that he hears and accepts everyone who claims to be spiritual will experience confusion and great spiritual loss if he's not judging what the person's saying. You guys with me? So, be, so, so, but before we judge others, we must do an inventory and judge our own selves. As, as critical and as quickly as you judge other people, are you judging your own self with that same criticalness? Are we superficially judging people based on appearances? Are we jumping to conclusions without knowing the facts and passing judgment based on hearsay? Just because you heard someone talking about someone else, now you're jumping into conversation with them? Are you committing the same sin that you're pointing out in others? Are you self-righteously judging others like the Pharisee being confident in your own self-righteousness and standing in pride? Wow, look at all that. Look at all that. Right? I don't even. How many of us would have even went that deep? How many of you even uh, would have even thought to go that deep? Right? But see, all of that comes 
from just being judgmental and critical about someone else. So, so here's the question. What's causing you to be judgmental? What's causing you to be judgmental of others? Right? Think about that. What's causing you? Is it, is it, is it, uh, uh, see, now, now you gotta look at yourself. Let's be critical about you now. See, this is what an inventory is about. It's about, it's about taking a look at yourself, take, putting your eyes on you, and taking your eyes off of everyone else. So, what causes you to be judgmental? I want you guys to, to write down, what do you think causes you to be judgmental? Right? Think about it. This first one, I'm not going to get too much into it. I've given it a little bit, but I want to see what you guys write down because we're going to kind of ask the same question a couple more times. So, um, in James 4.11, he says this. He says, don't criticize one another, my friends. If you criticize and judge another Christian, you are criticizing and judging the law. So if you judge the law, then you are no longer one who obeys the law, but one who judges it. Wow. This, this scripture right here is kind of hard to understand a little bit also. So to criticize and judge is a form of slandering, right? And a slanderer puts himself above the law, and he acts as though God's law does not pertain to him. You guys get that? Because you're criticizing and you're judging and you're acting like the, the instructions that come from God don't pertain to you. How many times have we done that? How many times have you casually and carelessly and recklessly began to slander and criticize your leaders, your pastors, your bosses, your wives, your husbands, our family members, right? And we begin to slander them. A slanderer puts himself above the law and acts as though God's law does not pertain to him. And in doing so, he makes himself a judge of the law rather than a doer of the law, right? I talked about this not too long back on the 30-day on the, um, the uh, uh, um, thing I did for, for the book of James. So anyone who does this is motivated by pride and arrogance. So you guys get this. If you're criticizing and you're slandering and you're judging, it's you're, you're motivated by pride and arrogance. And if you're doing this, then you begin acting as though you're God and passing judgment on others. And by doing this, you're rejecting God's royal law that says that you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wow, look how look how look how how deep that went into a certain place where I'm committing sin now by breaking the commandment of God by just a casual, reckless, and careless conversation because I feel like God's word doesn't pertain to me and I can go ahead and speak and put somebody down and slander them all I want because I don't like the way they talk to me. Because I don't like the way they got at me. Because I think they think that, that I'm, I'm less than they are. So this is why, this is why we're saying you got to look at yourself. What's causing you to act like this, right? In, in Matthew 7, 2, he says this. In Matthew 7, 2, Jesus says, For you will be treated as you treat others. For you will be treated as you treat others. And the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Wow. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Have you guys ever wondered why things might not be going right in your life? Have you ever wondered why you might be experiencing hardship and complication? Have you ever thought to yourself, man, Lord, what's going on? Why, does, why do I keep running up against the wall? I'm praying. I'm reading my Bible. I'm going to church. I'm doing discipleship classes. And God's saying, yeah, but you haven't stopped criticizing. You haven't stopped judging. You haven't stopped slandering. And you haven't stopped talking about people either, have you? Right? Because now we're speaking evil of the brethren. Now we're, now, we're, now we're acting like who? The accuser of the brethren. <laughs> Sits there, judging and accusing them day and night, right? So we see here, so we see here that, that uh, uh, our, so um, to criticize and judge, right? Matthew, Matthew 7 says, the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. So are you treating others with mercy, love and kindness and forgiveness? Or are you holding others to such a high expectation that all you can do is judge their actions and be critical about the way they carry themselves 
and handle things in life. Did you follow me in that one? Did you, did you guys follow me in that one? Are you, are you holding others at such a high expectation that all you can do is judge their actions and be critical about the way they carry themselves and handle things in life? This is part of the inventory that we must make. This uh, we have to learn to be brutally honest with ourselves so we, so we know what to surrender and we know what to hold on to. Amen? See, look at, look at all this stuff that we can surrender. Look at all that we pride, arrogance, gossiping, slandering. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, what else did we talk about here? Uh, uh, being critical, being judgmental. See, Jesus is warning those who pronounce judgment on others as if they were God, that they will be judged with the exactly the same standard and to the same degree that they hold others to. You ever wonder? You ever wonder why it's like that? Maybe it's because that's what you're doing. This is why it's important to take a look at yourself, right? Maybe it's what you're doing. Judgmental people will always end up being judged by everyone else. So if you're judgmental, you're going to be judged by everyone else also. The Bible says this, that you're going to reap what you sow. So if that's what you're planning, and that's what you're doing, then that's why you're getting what you're getting. And the only one you can complain and cry to is that little corner, because that little corner is the only place that's going to be justifiable to hear all your crying and complaints about how life is so unfair, but it's coming from you. Maybe you need to stop it. Maybe you need to stop, face the facts about what we're doing, and surrender it to God so you can be done with it. And a message like this is to help us to become aware of what we're dealing with so that we can be done with that way of life, so we can be done with these mountains, so we can be done with these hindrances, so we can be done with this opposition, so that we can start moving forward into the plans that God has for us. But if you don't ever deal with this stuff, and if you don't ever face it, if you don't, this is what it is, if you don't ever admit to yourself, if you don't ever confess these things and say, yes, I've been doing this, Lord, now you're aware of it. Now you got something to fight with. Before you're just like, oh, Lord, just help me. But, but when you start saying, forgive me, Lord, I've been judging them. I've been very critical, Lord. I know I've been complaining and I've been gossiping about them, Father God. I am totally in the wrong, my Lord. Please forgive me, Lord Jesus. I didn't know it was a habit, it was a tendency. But now that I'm aware, my Lord, I will keep my mouth shut, my Lord. I repent this moment, Lord. I repent of this complaining. I repent of this judging. I repent of being so critical. I repent of holding people up to a high expectation and standard. And I, and, and I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Lord, I humble myself before you. Because the Bible says, humble yourself before the Lord. And he's going to lift you up, right? Not, not, not you, not say, oh, Lord, please humble me. Because if he does it, you're not going to like it. Woo! It's like getting a step. I said, be but, you know, But, you know, this is why God's like, no, you just stop. You stop because because if God gets involved, it, 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 I was talking with somebody earlier and saying, you know what? When, once God gets involved and you start wrestling with God because of your simple actions and your simple ways and your simple attitude, who's going to come save you? See, it's one thing to have the enemy oppressing you and, and be battling with spiritual warfare with the devils, but when you're in sin and you don't recognize it and it's God standing in front of you telling you you're not going to move no more further until you get rid of this and you're sitting there in denial and you're ignoring that situation and you're acting like everyone else is the problem except you, you're stuck and you're not going to move forward until you surrender that attitude, until you surrender that mindset and you make a decision about who you are and who you he is and decide in your heart that you alone are God, I'm not God, your law pertains to me Lord, and I forgive me Lord and I surrender myself to you God I will not be critical about people I will not be judgmental about people and I'm going to judge my own self before I even think about trying to judge anyone else, right? So here's a question, here's a question I'm sorry guys, what standards do you have in place that you use judging others? What standards do you have in place that you use in judging others? Now, this is definitely an inventory question, wanting you to take a look at your morals and your standards, right? 
What are morals? Just good behavior, bad behavior, right? That's what a moral is. What good behavior do you have? What bad behavior do you have? So the standard is nothing more than a belief or a value system. So it's something that you believe is okay in your life, right? Our standard should be the word of God. No more, no less. We should hold mercy, which is based on love and forgiveness, at a high standard and never repay evil for evil. How many of us, when someone, when someone does you dirty, you're like, all right, I got you, homie. I got you, big dog. Now let's do nothing. Now I got you. No, no problem, no problem, no. We're cool, we're cool. We'll, I'll catch you on the rebound. I'll wait for you till we roll up again. No, no, no. I'll be back next week. No, I'll see you next week. No, then it'll be my turn. <laughs> That's evil. That's wickedness. That's bad morals. Bad company corrupts good morals, the Bible says. You better watch who you're hanging around. You better watch who you're listening to. You better watch who you're coming in agreement with. You better watch who, 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 you're, who, who you're, the people that are out there talking. Uh, are they walking in the standards of the Lord? Or are they walking in, in the worldly standards, right? Our, so, so here's the key phrase that we need to practice this week. Practice righteous standards of God. You need to practice the righteous standards of God. There is a standard, right? And I know that, that that's been my battle since I've come to, to surrender my life to God is, is, is allowing my mind to, to surrender all those worldly standards and to accept godly standards in my life. See, look at this. In Romans 12, 2, he says this of the Good News Translation. He says, do not conform yourselves to the... But let God transform you inwardly change of your mind. See, don't conform to the standard of this world. What does that tell me? That the world has standards also, right? The world has standards and they can look good. They can walk up in their, in their tie and their suit and they can say, good evening, how are you doing today, right? But they can be, they can be with a deceitful motive in their heart, determined to be greedy and to undermine somebody and to set somebody up, and, to, and, and then when they least expect it, they're going to assassinate their character, criticize them, so they can cut their throat, step on them, and move forward in life. That's the world's standard. You know, now I'm going to get far, I'm going to get ahead no matter what, right? That's not godly standard. That's the world's standard, right? A standard. Your standards are a personal set of norms of what is acceptable and unacceptable to you. They are rather unambiguous and pretty factual. Now that word unambiguous means to have no doubt or no misunderstanding about what you believe. The mindset. You have no doubt or no misunderstanding about what you believe. So this is what you stand on and you're not changing. How many of us sit there and we're not going to change our mind about certain standards that you're standing on? Think about it. Think about it. What are some things that are not, you know, that, that doesn't please God, that you're determined to continue to act in and to live out? So when someone has standards, they exhibit top-notch character in class, and they don't settle, and they don't compromise their values or beliefs. Now, that's not a bad thing, but that's not a good thing either. Why is it not a good thing? Because if it's not a God thing, then it's not a good thing. Come on, somebody. If it's not, if it's not God's standards, then it's not good standards. See, so, so, so I need to make sure that I'm not patting myself on my back and thinking that everything is all good and I don't understand why everybody's tripping because I got some worldly standards. Maybe it's the worldly standards that are keeping you from growing in Christ. Oh, wow. Amen? Yeah. Come on now. Think about these things. Think about these things that you're determined to continue to believe is okay. That you're determined to continue to think you don't see, well, well I don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, I don't think it's bad. Well, I don't think it's wrong. Right? This is, so, so number three. Uh, Matthew 7, 3 says this. Why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? So here Jesus is telling us to judge ourselves. Don't worry about the problems in someone else's life right now. Worry about your own problems and your own life. Instead of judging and criticizing others, we need to judge ourselves. If you do not honestly face up to your own sins and issues and confess them, we blind ourselves to ourselves. You blind yourself to yourself. And then you cannot be used for God or anybody because you can't see clear enough to help nobody. 
How is it that you're trying to help somebody when you're not even looking at your own issues here? So here's the question. What's causing you to be insecure, so insecure that you feel the need to look at someone else's problems? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? What's causing you to be so insecure that you feel the need to look at someone else's problems? Could it be you're doing the very same thing that, they're, that, that you're judging and criticizing them about? Oh, right? You're sitting there judging them and criticizing them, but yet you're doing it in a whole different magnitude and a whole, you know, you're doing it way more than they are. Could it be a lack of confidence in who you are? Or a lack of confidence in who God is creating you and them to be. Why are you judging somebody that God is building up? Why are you criticizing somebody that's just growing past their issues? Right? He's not finished with any of us yet. Right? Could it be arrogance? Now arrogance is a false confidence based on your own ability. You're arrogantly thinking that you got it all together and you think that you're God enough to judge someone else and what they're going through. Man, how many times have we made this mistake? How many times have we stepped in this puddle? True confidence comes from faith in our all-powerful God. So the key phrase that we're going to practice this week is learn to be confident in God, right? Jeremiah 17, 7 says this, the person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, is blessed. If you got your confidence in the Lord, you are blessed. See, but, but so confidence in the Lord means I can trust Him in all situations. I have faith in God. I have certainty in God. And I am assured of my relationship in God. Do you have confidence in God? Do you trust God? Right? And He's taking us to deeper levels of trust and deeper levels of confidence. Do I don't, I don't have to worry or stress so much about my own weaknesses because it causes me to be insecure and look at others' weaknesses. I don't have to be the smartest or most successful person because I can depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me. Remember, it's in our weaknesses that what? That He is, strong. that he is strongest. Yeah. Right? It's in our weaknesses. Yeah. Ma uh, number four, Matthew 7, 4. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Oh man, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is calling out the human tendency to inflate the wrongdoing of other people while minimizing your own wrongdoing. How many of us minimize? How many of us minimize? You're, you're making someone else's issue look all big, but you're acting like your issue ain't. I'm like, come on, it's just, it's just one beer. I mean, I just have one beer tonight. That's all it is. <laughs> well, that's one beer too many for you. The fact that there's a plank in our own eye, but only a speck in our brother's eye, exposes the hypocrisy, the self-righteousness, and pride at the heart of the matter. Somehow we can't discern that our own sins are more serious than those we concentrate on in others. So we criticize others while forgiving, pardoning, and excusing ourselves. How many of us do that? You're criticizing and judging someone else, but when you do it, Oh man, it was just an accident. Oh, it was just a little mistake. Oh man, oh, that's too bad. You know, and I was thinking about that, Patsy, because I lost something today. And I'm not going to say no more. I just lost something today. And I know if Patsy would have lost it, I probably would have been, what are you doing? Why weren't you taking care of that? And I could hear her in my mind say, yell at yourself. Yell at yourself. Tell yourself something. And Patsy, I just want to let you know I did. I feel bad about it, and I've been sitting there saying, man, Robert, but you know, this lesson brought me to a place where I could recognize that today. It brought me to a place where I could acknowledge the error of that way today. And that's the purpose of a lesson like this, so that we can become aware of our shortcomings, so that we can become aware of what we need to surrender, so we can make a list and put it on the list, so we can make a decision later on when we become entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This one's got to go. Come on now, amen? I only got a little bit of time. I'm going to run through this, guys. Too often are those... Those faults we pass judgment on in others are the very same faults that we can't bear to admit. 
in ourselves. Come on, somebody. You can't bear to admit it in yourself, but you're sure to quick to you're sure quick to bring it up in uh, someone else, right? So what thoughts are driving you to be critical? Here's the question. What thoughts are driving you to be critical? Is it jealousy? Ooh. Are you jealous of people? Right? Is it hate? Is it self-righteousness? Is it selfishness? Maybe it's too much uh, self-love. Or maybe you think you're better than everyone else. Do you have an inflated sense of importance? Or maybe it's a deep need for excessive attention and admiration. Or maybe you have entitlement issues and are envious of others. Maybe you have an arrogant, haughty behaviors and attitudes. Oh, well, there's a whole list of stuff to let go of, huh? Come on now. Come on. If you just look deep enough, you know what? Lamentations 340, this is the scripture that goes with step four. Lamentations 340 says, let us test and examine ourselves, repent, and return back to the Lord. You know why? Because when you look, you're going to find something. No one is righteous. No, not one. And we've all fallen short of God's glorious standard of living. So the key phrase that we're going to practice this week is leave judgment to God. Right? Romans 2, 1 and 3. You guys ready for this? You guys, can you guys handle this? This is the word of God, all right? And this isn't to tear nobody down. This isn't to beat you up. This is to help us to become aware of the seriousness of how critical we can be and how much hindrance it, it, it is in our lives that stops us from growing and moving forward. Because when you get under pressure and you start dealing with life on life's terms and you don't understand why, what's the first thing you do? You know what? Forget it. I know. So what? Just walk away. You walk away with a, you know, I don't care. Shoot, what? And it's an attitude. Because that's all you got left is pride. And that's the only thing that's going to carry you is pride. So you got to puff your chest out. You got to walk with that attitude because you ain't got nothing else to walk in. Right? And the only other option is to humble yourself before the Lord and let Him lift you up in honor. And He will. See, but that's going to take a choice by you. You got to humble yourself. You got to bow down in honor. Look at this. Romans 2 1 through 3 says, You may think you can condemn such people, but you're just as bad. And you have no excuse. When you say they're wicked and should be punished, you're condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. Oh, Lord. And we know that God in His justice will punish anyone who does such things. Since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think you can avoid God's judgment when you do these very same things? You guys got to chew on that. You guys got to swallow that. You guys got to get to know that. So you stop that so the river can flow smoothly. Right? Right now it's backed up because of these situations in our lives. You got to stop being so judgmental and critical. In Matthew 7, 5, he says this. He says, hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. That word hypocrite uh, comes from the word hypocrites. Hypocrites, which means an actor or a stage player. It li it's literally trans translates uh, as an interpreter from underneath, which reflects uh, the ancient Greek actors who wore masks. And the actor spoke from underneath that mask. It can also mean a person who pretends to have virtues, who pretends to have morals, who pretends to have religious beliefs, or, or pretends to have principles or godly values that they do not actually possess. So a hypocrite pretends to be a certain way, but really acts and believes the totally opposite. Have you searched your heart in that area? Have you got rid of all your hypocritical ways? Have you got rid of all those uh, ungodly desires and tendencies that you have? So what mask of judgment are you wearing? Right? There's a question you need to answer. What mask of judgment are you wearing? Could it be self-righteousness, insecurity, or maybe you feel like a, like a victim and everyone's against you? What mask of judgment are you wearing? Here's another question. What's keeping you from seeing the log in your own eye? Think about that one. What's, what's keeping you from seeing the log in your own eye? Is it denial? Are you in denial about these things? Or, or is it ignorance? Is it indifference? You don't care? So what? I don't care about something. I'm just here. I just hope that my presence here makes everything better and everyone likes me at the end. You know, yeah, I, I don't care. I've been going to, I've been going to church. I've been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been going to recovery hoping that that's going to make things better. I don't make anything better. Right? 
Is it indifference? Is it ignorance? Is it pride? So the key phrase to practice this week is we're going to put, we're going to practice putting on Christ. In Romans 13, 14, he says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh. Right? Make no provisions for the flesh. So we're going to put on Christ. We're going to put on his character. We're going to put on his ways. We're going to put on his life. We're going to walk like, we're gonna, you got to practice walking like him, talking like him, thinking like him, right? We've got to be children of the light. We're children of the day. We're not children of darkness. We're not children of the night, right? So why does it say put on the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we must put on the character that reflects your new identity in Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. So the word provision means forethought, and the whole sentence will go like this. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let any thought in your head that would lead you to a sinful desire. So the battle is in the mind. You got to stop it before it gets into the heart and becomes a passion. So you monitor what you're thinking about, right? Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Spirit think of things that please the Spirit. So set your mind on the things above and not the things below, right? And focus on, on praising God. You know, the Bible says don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and He's going to give you the desire of your heart. But delighting yourself in the Lord is going to have to be an intentional effort on your behalf. Finding the peace, joy, contentment, satisfaction that comes from a right relationship with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, so, the, call of, so the call to put on Christ is to become what you already are as a child of God. And Paul is calling us to be who we are in Christ. You're a child of the light and a child of the day. Now look like it, live like it, and fight like it. Amen? Come on now, let's get the Lord to come on. We gotta look like it, we gotta walk like it, and we gotta fight like it. Amen? All right, so I pray you guys got something out of today's lesson today, you know, about being judgmental and critical. And uh, we're going to get into our, our small groups right now, and we're going to begin to do a step four, okay? So in this step four, we're going we're gonna to answer as many questions as we can on the back. Remember, we're just making lists. You're not trying to explain nothing. You're not trying to fix nothing. You're just being honest with yourself about certain things that are on the back of this paper here, Amen. So we're going to take about 20 minutes. We're going to get into our groups. Uh, facilitators, if you can, get the papers back. Uh, don't let nobody go home with us inventories because we're going to we're going to deal with them next week. Okay. So all the all the table all the table coaches and the facilitators take the papers back. Don't let them go home with them. Huh? Yes. Yes. No. It's the it's the it's the one with the list. Yes. Yes. That's the inventory. So we're going to spend some time doing that, okay? All right, everybody. The Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for, for making us become aware of these areas of our lives that we can still surrender to you, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for teaching us the dangers of being critical and judgmental and blaming others and pointing fingers. And, and Father, we just ask, Lord, that when we get into our step four inventory, Lord, that you would just uh, let these things surface and come up so that we can write them down and be done with them once and for all, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. All right, everybody. God bless you. Thank you so much.